What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're starting a new series talking about some different features that I think would be cool to be added to SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so it's no secret that there's some kind of like question marks about the way that SketchUp is adding new features to the program. I thought it would be fun to do a series kind of exploring feature sets um, of features that I've seen from other softwares or other ideas that people have had and what they might look like in SketchUp. You know, specifically talking about why they would be valuable, um, why or if they're even feasible. And so the whole attention here is to discuss possible features with the community. Um, with the hopes that some good ideas might come out of this and maybe even make their way back to the SketchUp development team. Now, I will be the first to say I have nothing to do with SketchUp's development or new features, so this might turn into an exercise in wishful thinking, but if nothing else, it'll be a fun series to give you an idea of what else is out there as well. Okay, and so the first video, I wanted to talk about the idea of modifiers and why I think they would be a cool addition to SketchUp. Um, and so first off, what is a modifier? And so before we talk about modifiers, what you need to understand is generally speaking, when you're editing things in SketchUp, right, like this wall, for example, and you make changes, you kind of have to do like destructive modeling in the sense that if I come in here and cut a hole in this wall, what I'm having to do is I'm having to actually affect the geometry in this wall, right? I'm having to manually remove this geometry. And that's fine, assuming this door is never going to move again. But the problem is a lot of things in SketchUp, like openings and other things like that, are going to move around a little bit. And so what these require is they require a fair amount of manual editing after the fact to make changes. And so that can get even more complicated with things like stairs and other things like that. Well, one of the features that's contained in Blender is the idea of modifiers. And so what modifiers are is modifiers are non-destructive things or functions that you apply to objects in your 3D space. So the way that this works, for example, is let's say that I wanted to cut an opening in this wall, instead of me coming in here, going into edit mode and like splitting the wall up like this and actually changing and adjusting the geometry, what you can do instead is you can use what's known as a modifier. And so if I go over into my modifier tab over here and I add a Boolean modifier, what this does is this allows me to take an object and use it to cut an opening in my wall, right? So, so far it looks very similar to what we've done in SketchUp. However, if I move this around, right? If I move this back and forth, notice how this is actually live, meaning that it's still kind of active in my 3D workspace, right? So if I move this up, you can see how that opening is moving around. It's a very valuable way of cutting openings in here, but you're able to do it in a way that this can actually move around. And so where that gets really valuable is then you can group the different objects together, right? So I can select this whole collection right here. And notice I've got this door in here. Well, now I've got this door that I can move around and it's live cutting and opening inside of my model so that I can actually move it around in here. So it's not destructive as much as it's um, basically, it's live. And then once I'm done, I can apply that to finalize the geometry, but um, it's a much more modular system. And so one of the cool things about the modifiers is there's a bunch of different kinds, right? So for example, say that I wanted to create some stairs, you can use these modifiers in order to do that live, right? So the stairs are still in here and I can still move these around um, as an object, right? So I could like inference them or snap them or whatever, but um, they're actually live in here, meaning I could come back in here and adjust the number of stairs that are created with this array modifier. And again, that ability to um, make changes without actually committing them finally is actually really valuable. And then there's a bunch of interesting other tools in here as well, right? So like the simple deform modifier allows you to take an object and you can bend it, you know? So you can pick a direction along which you bend things like this, but it's a really quick way um, to be able to bend and twist and taper different objects like this, right? So you can see how I could use this in order to really quickly create things like a spiral stair. But if I need to go back in and make adjustments, I definitely can, right? So for example, um, if I was to tab in here and adjust this object and make a change, right? Notice how that change is reflecting across all of the different objects in here like this. 
live. And so again, just like a super valuable way of being able to come back in here and make those different changes really quickly. And then there's also things like the subdivision surface modifier, which is a modifier that allows you to do subdivisions inside of your viewport, right? So notice how that comes in here and that subdivides your mesh. Um, and if you want to like toggle that off, you can to go back in here to work on your object. Um, so it's non-destructive in the sense that it's just kind of like live working in your viewport. And so there's a ton of use cases for something like this inside of SketchUp. Probably the biggest ones that I'm seeing is that ability to cut your openings near walls using Booleans. Having live Booleans would be really great. So like right now, for example, we do have Booleans in solid tools. Um, so let's say I create an object right here and I move this across, we can do this with solid tools right now, but the problem is um, if I activate this and I subtract this object from this object, it's, um, it's basically committed, right? It's destructive in the sense that it's done. I can't go back in and edit that and adjust it, and it would be really nice if we had a way to do that. Now, I was kind of looking for um, tools that have similar use cases or functionality inside of SketchUp already. And obviously this works a little bit differently, but um, let's say that I took this object right here, tools like Bevel do have a live function to them, right? So Bevel, for example, has this option here to do a live Bevel. And so when you do this, what it's doing is it's coming in here and it's beveling your object. So let's say I typed in a value of like six inches right here, just so you can see this. This is actually a live bevel that's happening in SketchUp, right? So I can move this around um, and it's all happening live. You can see how it's red in here, meaning that it hasn't actually changed the original geometry of the object. And so let's say I was to come back in here and activate this tool and say split this top surface right here and push pull this. So this is basically similar to the way that modifiers work inside of SketchUp. So another example of this is the extension SubD, which is basically a tool that allows you to subdivide meshes like this. So notice how that's adding these different subdivisions in here. But then if I want to toggle that back off, I can just click on this button right here, right? It allows me to toggle this so that I can make these non-destructive subdivisions in here. So again, if I was to come in here and just split this surface right here, and maybe just for fun, we'll add a little bit of edge definition in here like this. Don't really need to, but we can. Um, but again, if I select this object, notice how I can apply that subdivision in here and I can adjust it up and down. And then when I don't want to use it, um, I can just toggle it off. Now, obviously there are some things that this does with your geometry in here that maybe aren't ideal, but in general, this is kind of a similar functionality to what we're already seeing inside of Blender. So seeing this functionality expanded to allow non-destructive modeling in the SketchUp viewport would be, in my opinion, extremely helpful and would be a big plus for SketchUp in general. And so another example that's a little bit different, but it kind of isn't in the sense that it's clearly built in here is when you work with a tool like TrueBend, like this to bend an object, notice how this is dynamically updating the object in your scene. Now, obviously this is different because when you, uh, when you let up on the function, and you hit the enter key, it's going to finalize that function. But I'm wondering if the functionality isn't built into SketchUp a little bit where it could go ahead and it could preview this, but make this adjustable. So like store your adjustments in here and allow you to adjust them. Um, I have no idea what the under the hood version of that would look like. So it might be something that's just a little bit too difficult, but I mean, obviously there are some tools in here that are at least doing something similar to what modifiers are doing in Blender already. And so in my opinion, there, there's a couple pros, right? The first is this could totally solve the problem of cutting opening for doors and windows inside of SketchUp. Um, that wouldn't be an issue anymore because you could just use Boolean objects that are live. Um, so creating repeating objects like arrays instead of, um, instead of, for example, if I take this object and I copy it right with the move tool. So right now, if I do that, 
I'm just gonna go right here, type in times five. The problem is once I click off of this with the move tool, right, it's done. So if we had the ability to like store and adjust that uh, modification, I think that would be really cool as well, um, as well as possibly having the ability to kind of like stack those together, kind of like they are in Blender, where like, for example, I was able to create the array in here and adjust that before I came in here and started doing the bend, right? So that would be extremely valuable as well. And so the way I would see this working, at least initially, would be a set of tools that work kind of like the modifier tools in Blender work. So the first tool that I would like to see would be a live Boolean tool. And so what the live Boolean tool would do is it would work kind of like the bevel tool in the sense that you would set it up where you would, where you would be able to pop up a window and then you would be able to set the object that you're cutting with and the object that it's cutting inside of SketchUp, but it would work kind of in the same way as the bevel tool or the bevel extension, where you could actually click on a button in order to access that original geometry. Um, and you'd be able to basically place a Boolean and kind of group it together with like door geometry in order to create kind of a live opening in SketchUp. So the second function that I think would be cool to see would be to have an array tool. And this could be implemented even as an extension. I'm not really sure exactly how it would look, but instead of me having to come in here and use the move tool in order to create a non-destructive array, right, like this, what you would do instead is you would select it, you would click on a button to pop up a menu, and what it would do is it would have your array functionality in here. And you could set if you wanted to create a certain number of copies this way, this way, this way, or in multiple different directions. But again, it would be something that would work kind of in the same way as that bevel tool where you could actually click on a button to pop up the menu and come back in here and adjust that original geometry. So if I wanted to come back in here and make a change, right, that change would then be reflected across the geometry inside of SketchUp. And then the last tool that I think would be interesting, at least to start, that's kind of built on this modifier functionality, it would be a tool that allows you def to deform objects, kind of like true bend, but it would allow you to do twisting, it would allow you to do bending of objects. And again, you could select that object and come back in here and adjust like the number of degrees that you've bent something, other things like that. Now a bonus would be if you had the ability to stack those modifiers on top of each other, right? Like we have in Blender here, where we have the array modifier, which is gonna create my number of objects, but then we also have the deform modifier. And and I have the ability to toggle these on and off, right? So I can use one in order to create the array and then stack the other one on top of it in order to add things like bends and other things like that. So um, another example would be this monkey head. I've got the subdivision surface modifier on here, but I can actually come in here and I can stack another array on top of this, as well as being able to add other modifiers as well, right? So I could add a simple deform modifier after I've created all of that and notice how this is allowing me to like twist or bend or, so this is the way that it works in Blender. It would be cool if you could stack those modifiers on top of each other in SketchUp as well. I'm not sure exactly how that would look, but I do think that would add some really interesting functionality to SketchUp um, in a way that we're not really seeing in a lot of other CAD style programs. All right, so that's my case for adding modifiers to SketchUp. I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. Do you think this would be feasible? Um, is it something you'd like to see in the program? I just love having that conversation with you guys. I'd also love to hear from you what you think about this series. Is it worth going down this path or should we just talk about something else? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.